first Google result for the general schematic is this cursed <laughs> thing. Yes! G'day you legend, welcome back to another Electrician Reacts, and apparently you really like my video on Styro Pyro, except for this guy. It's fair enough. And I really liked making it, this guy is an absolute legend! Who is he? Like a magic guy? But when you suggested that I should be doing like the fire death machine thing, I'm like, really not my jam. Are you f kidding me? Of course it is! Let's do it! Okay, I have been saving myself for this video, and based on your comments, I reckon this is gonna be pretty bloody awesome. I recently came across these Tesla arc lighters on eBay, and for how cheap they are, I couldn't help but buy a couple to screw around with. I love electricity and I love fire. So anything that combines the two is definitely going to grab my attention. I mean, seriously, what could be more fun than a device that can burn stuff with an electric plasma? So today I'm going to test these things out and maybe make a few upgrades. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. All right, here goes nothing. Oh. Huh, you call that a plasma lighter? <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so based on the size of this thing, I really don't see much resemblance to a Tesla coil. They might be stepping it up to high voltage so they can get past the, the air gap, but it's probably about it, really. Yeah, that's basically blasphemous to put Tesla's name on something like that. <laughs> exactly. Huh, I was expecting something a lot bigger than this. Yeah, this thing is definitely going to need some upgrades. Can it light LEDs? Okay, that's pretty interesting. That is pretty cool. I mean, you can't do that with a regular lighter. How about some neon bulbs? Hmm. Oh, wow, that's actually pretty bright. Neat. All right, this one's for science. Oh, holy <laughs> heck, that hurt. Jeez. Okay, now I'm bored. Okay, so I'm not that impressed with this thing. I mean, it can light things on fire, I'll give it that. I mean, if it's gonna have the Tesla name on it, I expect it to be able to melt metals, or at least shoot a giant jet of plasma out of it. Maybe I can just feed it higher voltage for a bigger arc. Taking it apart shows that it has a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery inside. So by removing that, I can hook the lighter up directly to a variable power supply and crank up the voltage. All right, here I have it hooked up to 4.2 volts, which is the equivalent of having a fully charged battery. I suspect he's going to burn this thing out pretty quickly. <laughs> and... Huh. That's weird. Why isn't it making an arc? Well, uh, I guess I can just crank up the voltage until it works, right? Okay. Wow. Oh, there we go. Huh. Okay. <laughs> so it's just literally going to do nothing. I'm not really sure why that lighter did even start up. Yeah. But I only have one backup, so this time I'll try upgrading the transformers before stepping up the voltage. Ooh. Well, at least it works. It's really no different than the original. Let's step up the voltage a bit there. Yeah, yeah the arc's definitely a bit hotter now. I mean, the circuit is drawing more current. But it's still nowhere near impressive. <laughs> Let's keep on cranking up the voltage and see what happens. <laughs> oh, okay, so it's uh, just gonna break that easily. Wow. <laughs> Alright, so I think my hopes of modding these things were a bit far-fetched. Mm. I mean, seriously, even a charged capacitor of this size isn't that exciting. Huh, that was actually pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so my point is, go big or go home, right? When it comes to high voltage, I tend to choose more archaic methods of power switching when I can. I mean, my biggest Tesla coil uses a freaking angle grinder to switch the tanks. That was a freaking awesome cool video. <laughs> That's I advanced so good. to the 20th century with my last Tesla coil build. It's based on a vacuum tube, and the device actually does satisfy the single electrode requirement. Wow. Unfortunately, it's lacking in the setting fire to things department. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it takes a while to get third degree burns from this thing. Now, that being said, tubes are still the easiest way to make a super hot arc using just one electrode. It turns out that at high enough frequencies and powers, you can generate an incredibly hot arc that resembles a real flame. When this is done on purpose, it's usually in a circuit dubbed the High Frequency Vacuum Tube Tesla Coil. I actually haven't seen this video where he's made a Tesla coil out of like a vacuum tube. If you guys can let me know if you've seen it and let me know why it might be more efficient by the look, it looks like a pretty simple circuit. It's pretty cool. Now I should clarify, this is the name given by hobbyists to a terrifying circuit that only has some characteristics of traditional Tesla coils. Oh, okay. Now we'll get more into what makes this circuit so scary later, yeah. but the first red flag is the fact that the first Google result for the general schematic is this <laughs> The thing is, a circuit using a puny 55-watt rated tube isn't going to satisfy my pyromaniac desires. 
but it at least provides a good starting point. Besides, I already have this awesome piece of Soviet military surplus on hand. This is, is a GU-5B triode, which is rated for several thousand watts of output power. Naturally, I bought it on eBay, and it looks like this one sat around in a warehouse for the past 38 years. Get lost. I could only find two other people that build an arc lighter from heck using this tube. There's Zilly Poper, whose videos actually scare me, and says <laughs> Lista555, who makes some awesome high voltage contraptions as well. I started the build by making a filament supply for the tube. I got a good deal on this toroidal transformer on eBay, and I clipped off a few of the windings to match the proper filament voltage under load. Nice. I also added a soft start to the circuit using some relays and big resistors. Cool. For the resonator coil, I wound some copper tubing on cardboard pipe. I used cardboard here because PVC and pretty much any other material available in pipe form would cause high dielectric losses. Now, actually powering this circuit turned out to be a lot harder than it should have been. For this special occasion, I decided to use the two biggest microwave transformers that I had salvaged during these past couple years. I threw them in an ammo can, encased them in wax, and I added some nice standoff insulators on top. And if that wasn't enough, I used this... Dude, that looks scary already. I probably don't need to be telling you this if you're watching it, but I just I should mention that microwave oven transformers are stupidly dangerous. There are too many people that die, particularly from wood fracking, which has become a lot more popular in the last several years. Uh, it was actually a really good interview that I found. I think it was on um, bigclive.com. He's got a wicked channel. And he was actually, he linked to it. I'll link to it as well below. It was just about a guy that got electrocuted from doing some wood fracking. And he's around today to chat about it awesome interview so i would highly recommend going and checking that video out after this one of course apply to drive a huge voltage doubler for the caps i used these chonky things Whoa. and for the hv diode i used a bunch of lower voltage diodes potted in wax in a pvc casing and then threw a couple doorknob caps across those for good measure <laughs> as a side note i can't break out microwave transformers on this channel without pointing out how incredibly lethal they are see they kill yeah. more electronics hobbyists than any other component yeah no joke. That being said, even as terrifying and lethal as this power supply is, it just couldn't hack powering my cursed arc lighter circuit. With a bit of searching, I came across a great deal on this huge transformer oh, salvage nice. out of a flashlight pumped laser. The transformer was a great fit, but it didn't solve all the circuit's issues. Now, not all the issues were bad per se, but you know what? Let me just show you how it runs. Fire. <laughs> Look at that tube light up. Look at that Variac. That is wicked. Yes. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my god. That is a Ah, uh, yes. There's that angry hot plasma that my puny little arc lighters couldn't give me. Now remember, I'm not feeding any gas in there. That crazy flame arc is just the air being ripped apart by the electromagnetic field. Wow. Now, to be fair, the flame didn't look like this when I first powered up the circuit. It turns out that coming up with an electrode that can withstand these conditions is pretty difficult. On normal Tesla coils, a breakout point in the form of a piece of copper wire is often added to control where the arc is directed. When I tried that with this overclock pseudo-Tesla coil, it didn't exactly work as intended. This is gonna melt. That's right, it melts copper wire like wax. Now this is pretty wow. crazy because not only does copper have a melting point of over a thousand degrees Celsius, I was just gonna say that. but most of the output power is actually going into the air around it, not the metal. Wow. So how about a steel electrode? The melting point of that is a few hundred degrees higher than copper, so it should be a better fit, right? Not quite. It turns out it burns like a fuse when hooked up to the output. Oh, that of is so coil. cool. <laughs> it's like a sparkler. Yes. Steel is a pretty good conductor in low frequency circuits, but its relatively high magnetic permeability means that its apparent resistance due to the skin effect becomes pretty significant at high frequencies. Uh, yeah. This means that it absorbs quite a bit more energy from the circuit than the copper did. Now, one of you commented last time about my, how incorrect I was about the skin effect. 
So actually, I'm going to leave this one up to you guys. If you've got a better explanation for me what the skin effect is, essentially the way I understand it to be is that when your frequency increases over a certain conductor, uh, it actually propagates outside of whatever the conductor is more, more so than you would a uh, lower frequency would take up more of the conductor. So the whole conductor, if it's lower, and then it would start to propagate on the outside as the frequency increases over time. If that is incorrect, can you let me know? Thanks. And this is pretty apparent as the steel melts a lot easier, even though it has a higher melting point. Now, I can't say I've ran into the issue of liquefying copper and steel electrodes before, so coming up with a durable electrode turned out to be quite a challenge. But then, I had an idea. I know it's puny, but that filament is made out of tungsten, which has the highest melting point of the metallic elements. Wow. If that high melting point can at least slow down how fast I burn through electrodes, it'll be pretty useful to me. Come well, on, I guess it can't. Boy. At least we know that that plasma can get over 3,400 degrees Celsius, which is pretty awesome in its own right. But still though, I need a way to not burn through electrodes every 10 seconds. Now there's only one other element on the periodic table that has a higher melting point than tungsten, and that's good old fashioned carbon. It turns out that my favorite element is available inside lantern batteries in the form of graphite rods. By opening it carefully, I can see the four individual cells that make up the overall battery. Each one of the cells has a graphite rod, and these should be able to handle the extreme conditions on my plasma Wow, look generator. at that, that's unreal. Plus all that manganese dioxide in there will be useful for other reasons. <laughs> yes. To top it off, the rods fit conveniently snug inside some 3 8 inch copper tubing. And since graphite is so soft, it's easy to grind the ends into nice breakout points for the plasma. Yeah, right. So without further ado, let's see how these hold up. It looks like graphite is a clear winner. Some wow. of the carbon is still vaporized, but it's slow enough to not be a huge deal. But now that I have an electrode that won't turn into a puddle means that I'm ready to spice things up a bit. That's right, I'm breaking out the chemicals. This electrode is loaded with sodium bicarbonate, aka regular old baking soda. <laughs> It looks so good. Oh, the sodium beautiful. is what gives the plasma that brilliant yellow color, but it also helps increase the flame size. All right, sodium was fun, so how about we try the element above it? It turns out lithium gives an incredibly deep red plasma on the generator. Now this isn't that much of a surprise considering it gives the best red flames of any element that I've burned at least. Everything I've put on this coil so far has been endothermic for the most part. That means that the chemicals absorbed energy by going into the plasma. But the thing is, I'm surrounded by all this reactive oxygen. It would be a shame letting that all go to waste. And since fire is conductive, <laughs> my thinking is that I should get some really interesting results if I use flammable conductive electrodes. <laughs> For the first angry electrode, let's start with magnesium. When magnesium is burned the normal way, it produces a blindingly bright white flame, and this is a pretty classic chemistry demo. So what happens when it's ran on the incinerator coil? <laughs> hmm, that's weird. Yeah. Why is it making every color there is? Like seriously, this thing's switching between red, green, orange, white, and sometimes all of them at once. I have no explanation for this. Is now the red is the most dependent? crazy to me because it's so deep. I've never seen magnesium produce these colors before. In fact, I'd be really curious to hear input from my viewers on this. Yeah. Since I had such crazy results with the first electrode, <laughs> I made another magnesium electrode, but with a lot more pieces of ribbon this time. Wow, that is amazing. Look at the green. This configuration didn't produce that striking red color like before, but instead, this one made a bunch more violet and green plasma. Yeah, that's unreal. Now, these colors weren't nearly as vivid as the red was, but either way, it's still pretty awesome because it's considerably different than the typical white flame. Wow. I had a smooth brain moment in one of my magnesium tests and forgot to move the ribbon away from the coil, and this actually ended up shorting out the coil a few times. Nice. The steel wool electrode turned out to be one of my favorites. Even at relatively low input voltages, the steel it's, wool ignites super easily and makes a nice shower of sparks. It's like a big sparkler that goes everywhere. It's so cool. Oh, wow. Mm. 
Now yeah. it stops igniting reliably once the outer wool burns off, but luckily that can just be fixed by raising the voltage. <laughs> Now I know what you're thinking. Is there anything useful you can do with this circuit? I mean, if you didn't know any better, you might think that this is all just a dangerous and complicated way of starting a fire. Yes. For starters, it's great at driving incandescent bulbs. And that's right. Why use two wires connected to mains when you can use this awesome single electrode <laughs> light bulb driver? At first, the circuit doesn't draw much power and just ionizes the gas inside of the bulb. But as it heats up, the melting glass becomes conductive enough to draw more power and really start to glow. Oh, wow. I find that 60 hertz hum coming from the voltage doubler to be really soothing. <laughs> it put you to sleep. <laughs> oh. What a great use for vacuum tube technology. Perfect. A plasma globe lights globe? up super easily on the coil. Wow! Since the operating frequency is nearly a thousand times higher than a stock globe, the plasma takes on some unusual forms compared to how they typically operate. Looks like an alien! Cranking up the power makes it much brighter as well. What? Unfortunately, the inner electrode on this one quickly melted through, which is why the plasma is turning yellow here. But even as the globe starts to take on air, it makes some absolutely stunning patterns that are totally worth the short-lived <laughs> nature of like the device. So beautiful. <laughs> Ridiculously. Star Pyro, you absolute legend. Make sure you subscribe to his channel, and I'm going to leave a link in the description below to all the people that helped him make that video. So make sure you subscribe to them, subscribe to me, and if you like this video, you're probably going to like this one as well.